Welcome to the Betfred Boxing Show with myself, Don McGuinness, and former world champion, Anthony Million Dollar Crawler. And Anthony, well, we've got a lot to look forward to. We're going to be talking Clarissa Shields. She's in action at the weekend. So we've got a special guest, Savannah Marshall, world champion. And again, a fight that we, well, we'll talk more about, yes. but we think will happen down the line. We're going to be joined by Mark Tibbs, sunning himself, but also in the Billy jo Joe Saunders camp. But first, as we're already referred to Billy Joe, we're yep. going to look back at... Canelo at the weekend in Miami. It was a matchroom show and, of course, yes. in with Avni Yildirim. And as you predicted last week, you said you thought third or fourth round. Well, yes, it didn't I think quite, it did. you, well, you were pretty much it's spot that. on then, really, weren't yeah. you? Because you didn't come out for the fourth and it was a, as big a mismatch as you're going to see. It was, and it was for that kind of occasion, the big ring entrance and stuff. I think Maurizio Sullivan has come out since saying, you know, we have to look at the mandatory situation. Well, that was well documented before, so it's like mm. saying it now. Um, it was, listen, you never begrudge anyone of the shot, but it just seemed very, very odd how Yildirim was uh, Canelo's mandatory, you know, when you looked at his recent form. What happened was what everyone thought was going to happen. Mm. Um, you know, Canelo looked great. It was just, it was, it was a very comfortable night for him. I think the only positives really to come out of, well, listen, we got to see Canelo twice again in size. Eight weeks, Callum Smith, and then eight weeks later, he's fighting his manager, which he's got to do. But also now, there's no injuries. And we set up for May the 8th with um, another Brit in Billy Joe Saunders. But um, yeah, a massive mm. show. And um, another, what expected, but another devastating performance from Canelo. As you say, positives, it was an event. 15,000 people were there. Yeah. Again, it was the Canelo show. So yes. uh, he had a, a ring entrance. Eddie Hearn had been talking about he was going to give Canelo a ring, ring entrance that he, he wanted. And he, yes. he got all yeah. that, didn't he? It was all bells and whistles. And, and that's what it was, wasn't it? It was a show. And, and again, you know, there, were, there were no surprises. It, it was just as one-sided, as we say, that yes. as you would expect. Yeah, there was, like you said, everyone knew what was going to happen. And like some people was like, you know, should have let his hands go more, but if he did, he probably would have gone earlier yeah. in, in all, you know, being realistic. Um, it's just that now, and I think, listen, Canelo, when you look at the quality of his opponent, you look at his resume, who he's fought, I suppose he was loud and easy night. Yeah. Um, I know they say there's no easy nights in boxing, but that was always likely to be one. Now, moves on for um, all the belts. Well, known all the belts, because obviously Keller Plant still got something to say in that, but um, another unification with yeah. Billy Joe Saunders, and, and we look forward to that now. In, you know, in a, in, a, in a good way, though, in terms of him taking care of the mandatory, means that the, the four belts are yeah. all in his sights this year. So, he, you know, his idea is pretty clear what he wants. Yes. He wants to be undisputed by the end of the year. So the next part of that puzzle is Billy Joe Saunders, we now yeah. know, May the 8th. So Canelo, 58 fights. 30 years of age, and again, his record just phenomenal. He's fought everybody. Yes. He, he likes to take on the Brits, and Billy Joe is, has the yes. well, the unenviable position, but he's going to earn a lot of money. It's a big, yep. big night for Billy. Uh, and we're going to get into this a, a little bit more, but again, Billy Joe and his record. What have you seen of Billy Joe Saunders and who he's fought to suggest that he goes in there with a positive frame of mind yeah. to take on Canelo? And Billy Joe will go in with a positive frame of mind. That's the character of the man. Um, I've knew Billy Joe Saunders since since him being a schoolboy. He was always a schoolboy, really stood out. Mm. I think he joined that elite club of four schoolboy titles right through June. Won everything, went to the Olympics as a kid still. I think he was 18, wasn't he, when mm. he went to uh, Beijing. An unbelievable talent. I think when there was Billy Joe, De Gaio, Frankie Gavin, who turned over with Frank Warren, although he'd not won what they had, a lot of people picked him out to be the star. If he managed to do this, then he'll go down not in boxing history, but mm. British boxing as um, one of the greatest wins of all time. I um, why, you, why you've got to give Billy Joe a chance, and I think what a lot of people refer to, there was a fight, it was a few years back now, um, it was a while back, and Canelo's improved massively since then, but yeah. the Lara fight, slick southpaw, on the move, well, there's similarities there, Billy Joe's got lovely skills, he give um, Canelo a lot of trouble. Trout give Canelo mm. uh, bits of trouble. Again, Southpaw on the move. And the question is, Billy Joe, can he do it as good as them two? You'd like to think yes. I um, So that's what it was. I think stylistically, if, if you are going to pick someone to go up against Canelo, I know I was in the corner with Callum Smith, but 
stylistically, you'd have that slick moving southpaw, who are a nightmare mm. for almost any fighter, but um, with Canelo in the past. But he, um, listen, he certainly has to, which I'm sure we're going to get on to, he certainly has to show something he's never shown before. He has to, like you say, that maturity to stick to that game plan. Timing could be everything, but as it shows in his last two fights, well, his last handful of fights, Canelo's looked absolutely, you know, near to unbeatable. Yeah. It's um, it, it's going to be tough, but I think why people are excited about or will be excited about is because of Billy Joe's style. Listen, it's, it's going to be no secret. Billy Joe's going to be on the move, on the back foot, that slickness, and he's going to look to cause Canelo problems through that. He's not going to stand there, mm. look to push Canelo on the back foot or hold his ground, hold his feet. We, we know what we're going to get, I think, without... Matt Tibbs won't have to give too much away with thinking that's how the fight's going to mm. plan out. Well, of course, Billy Joe was with Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs yeah. when he won the world title against Andy Lee. He obviously uh, he's been with the Ingle camp, he's been with Ben Davison, but he's back with Mark Tibbs now. So to find out a little bit more, myself and Anthony, we packed our bags, we flew over to the Canaries. Yeah. No, we didn't. It would have <laughs> been nice. But we did catch up with Mark Tibbs, who is in the Canaries, to find out a little bit more about how everything is panning out for Billy Joe. Yeah. Mark, it looks very nice where you are. I know you're obviously in the Canaries with uh, with Billy Joe and and uh, again, just set the scene for us. Just just kind of tell us a little bit about how it's all going over there and why you're there and and how things are panning out with Billy. Well, the reason you know, I mean, to be honest, when Billy Joe Saunders won 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 his world title, his middleweight world title in 2015, we we uh, my my father was uh, Billy Joe's main trainer. He was his head coach and. Uh, we decided as a as a as a team to take him to uh, to, to 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 mainland Spain to uh, warm weather training, and uh, mainly to to hold a bit of focus and uh, and and so it was uh, eat sleep train eat sleep train eat sleep train sometimes rest and recover, uh, but but in, 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 when he was touching on big time boxing Billy Joe Saunders, it was very difficult at home because of his. Uh, because of um, you know, you get friends and families that want to see and be in touch with Billy Joe. So, so that cycle, that training, professional, elite training regime was broken uh, quite often, keeping him in England. And so, I believe that when we took Billy Joe Saunders, uh, my father took Billy Joe Saunders in 2015 to to the MGM gym in Spain, now met in TK. Um, I believe uh, he's not broke that cycle ever since. So. I think he's adopted that, and he and he's uh, he's excelled in in, in that uh, going abroad to warm weather training. I mean, it's just uh, it works for some, and uh, you know, it don't work for everybody. But you know, it works for, for Billy Joe Saunders right now. And and being what it's like back home uh, with the lockdown scenario. I mean, lockdowns everywhere, but as you know, the professional boxing gyms are allowed to to open. But it's always nice to wake up when the sun's shining. In, in in the winter months and, and preparing for a fight, so that's why we're here in uh, in the Canary Islands. I know that was like that was five years ago now. It was the Andy Lee fight, wasn't it, um, Mark? What do you see as as the main things that Billy Joe's you know improved mentally now? You think he'd be much stronger now, wouldn't it? With age, maturity, that comes, and obviously you think for a fight like this, he's going to be pushed harder than ever before. Not just harder, but smarter than ever before. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, as soon as I got back involved with uh, with Billy Joe Saunders uh, uh, for the um, John Murray fight, I, I, I recognised immediately the uh, the maturity in his uh, in his body, in his strength, and uh, also in his in his, uh, his his thinking. And and um, he's always been strong minded. He's always been a phenomenal trainer he, he broke pain barriers after pain barriers after pain barriers but you know we've got to remember and he needs to be reminded that he's a slick man he's a slick slick free thinking fighter a slick free thinking fighter and we couldn't take that away from him in any way we couldn't take that away from him anyway and um and he, he knows he's got the intelligence and and, and the know-how and stylistically to take on someone like uh um, Canelo Alvarez, and he's going to need it. Of course, he's going to need that. That, that, of course, one hundred percent. 
Mark, I just want to ask you, because obviously Can Canelo is, is the golden ticket. You know, he's, he's fought a lot of Brits. It's all gone his way. Anthony was in the corner with Callum Smith just before Christmas. He's just done an absolute number on Yildirim. And again, you know, from a negative perspective, no one's going to give Billy Joe much of a chance, really. I know, I know you're going to tell me that you'll have different ideas. Of course you will. How does he put a dent in the Canelo machine, you know, power-wise? We know that obviously Billy's got all the skills in the world, but how power-wise can he, can he do what no one else has done and, and put a dent in that machine that is Canelo? Well, you know, you have to look at what you're working with and, and, and what you're up against, like, like you're saying. Can we put a dent in, in uh, Canelo's armoury? But, you know, we can, we can uh, box around and we can diffuse and take away power. And, and exploit areas, you know? So there's another way of uh, fighting. This is, I don't know if you can read into what I'm trying to say here. So, so, so. And I don't want to go too into detail because, you know, it's not fair on me talking like I'm going to talk because of what I see, of what I can see Billy Joe can and, and, and perhaps he will do <laughs> into uh, diffuse them, 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 them missiles and, uh, exploit the openings and and, uh, and set traps ourselves basically and make him fall short, encourage him to swing. I don't want to go too much into de mm. detail, but it's all about boxing, outfoxing, chipping and clipping. <laughs> but obviously we've got a, uh, we've got, it works two ways. We understand that. We're, we're all aware of that, but it's about pulling off, uh, a perfect game plan. I believe Billy Joe Saunders will do that on May the 8th. Yeah. Daniel Dubois suffered a, a crushing defeat. You've got to rebuild him now and, and you've got to get him back to where everyone was very excited. I mean, it, it's just been that kind of year, hasn't it, in a way that these things have happened. How are you going to pick up the pieces and how is Daniel now? And, and you know, again, it, it, he should still be one of the big heavyweight exciting prospects. I'm sure you'd agree with that. Yeah, one hundred percent. I feel that um, you know, I feel I've been around Daniel in in the Peacock Gym where where we all work together. So so, although I never worked close alongside him, you know, I couldn't help but notice him, you know, working there for for, for a long while. But um, I feel I can bring some some new some new elements to Daniel's game, and by bringing in new elements to Dan Daniel's game. Um, is going to give him confidence. I'm not saying he lacks confidence, but he's going to give him give him another level of confidence by bringing new stuff, new ingredients, new flavour to his work. You know, I feel I can do that in quick time with Daniel. I've not, I've not, I've not actually spoke to Daniel. Uh, I spoke to him on the phone a couple of times, but he's with my other, you know, my my, mm. my guys. That, yeah, they're ticking him over, but I hear he's very, very happy and uh, he's uh, he's in a good place right now. I'm a kind of trainer. I need to put my own stamp on him as well. So unless I can, you know, after when, you know, I get, get over, I've got obligations at the moment with, uh, with Billy Joe Saunders, but uh, my father is, uh, is doing a bit with uh, Daniel and uh, he's very, very happy in uh, how he's coming along so far. But going back to your question, no, I'm very confident in bringing some new flavour to his game and therefore he will... Uh, it will be apparent in his next bout, whichever, whenever that's going to take place. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the challenge, though. And uh, I'm really looking forward to Daniel Dupas, Daniel Dubois's next phase of his career. Well, interesting to hear Mark there and breaking down how he sees Billy Joe and Canelo going. It's interesting, obviously. Yeah. I mean, as you, as you pointed out before that, you know, we know how slick Billy yes. Joe is. And, and he's talking about kind of trying to get, get in those areas that m maybe with... I don't yes. know his slick style, but it's yeah. still a massive task, isn't it? Of course it is. Seeing up close, just defensively, how mm. good Canelo is. That's what makes the job so difficult. Like I said, for me, that was by far his best asset. Very good all round, but his defence. So, obviously, the what Mark's saying makes sense, you know, getting there, ex exploit those areas. But obviously once you get there, it's then finding a way through again. But, um, listen, it's no secret, obviously, Mark, I think if, you know much away. You couldn't be wrong to say you know what yeah. they're gonna do, but you'd be very very surprised if it doesn't involve the slip boxing of Billy Joe Saunders trying to 
you know, cancel out anything positive that Canelo's doing and sort of to steal the fight. Where's the power going to come from, though? To, I mean, again, it's a big question. As I, we put to Mark then, how do you put a dent in Canelo? Yes. It's, it's very easy to ask that. but No one's just, done that so far. You think, I know Callum Smith said this, you think that you've got to it hard enough to get Canelo's respect. And listen, Billy Joe, you don't win world titles. You don't beat some of the top opponents we have without, without mm. hitting hard enough. But I don't believe that's going to play too much of a factor into his game plan. He's, he's not going to be, you know, planning for it, looking to hurt Canelo at all. I think he's looking yeah. to box the ears off Canelo, you know, to outbox him. Um, and that's what it's come down to, his skills. Also, there, as we heard at the end, about Daniel Dubois, yes. Mark joining up with, with Daniel. Um, it's, it's been a crushing time for him, clearly, yeah. with the Joe Joyce defeat and, uh, you know, injury to the eye yeah. and everything else. But, you know, Mark really really bullish about the, the future yes. for him. It's good to hear, isn't it? And, and a change of scene won't do Daniel any harm. No, of course not. And he's, he's a super talent. It's like, I mean, we spoke about this at the time, like how he's been written off and I think sort of the manner in how the fight ended. Mm. But the bar's here to fight another day now. Thankfully, the eye injury is not career ending. And he comes back now, another good winner too. And um, people start talking about the bar the way there was before the Joe Joyce fight. I say, remember, he lost to a very, very good heavyweight yeah. in Joe Joyce. And speaking of heavyweights, because we did preview the action, the all New Zealand affair yes. over the weekend with uh, Joe Parker in with Junior yeah. Farr. And it, again, it was you could see with the crowd over there in yes. New Zealand, just prior to another lockdown, a mini lockdown yes. that they've gone into, but they got the event mm -hmm. over the line and it was huge. You could see how big it was. And again, it, it was two guys that knew each other from the amateurs, and you could kind yeah. of see that at the start of the fight as well. Yeah. Couldn't you? With, with far and his long, you know, he had it. It, it was it was well fit for that kind of Course, amateur I, style, three round style, basically, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll be honest. I really expected, you know, big domestic showdown. He expected mm. fireworks at some point. It wasn't. It wasn't the greatest fight um, at all. I think. I think more something that we're talking about an awful lot lately was the scorecards at the end of the yeah. fight. I think yeah, a lot of wide. people had it so close. Yeah. And then to um, I've give it Parker the way you know by the distance on the scorecards that it was was wrong, which would need some explaining. But we say all the time bad scorecards are always going to be a part of boxing. But I think now Parker moves on. There's not there's not too much to take from it. Too much to get excited about from that performance or that fight even. But I think a fight now I expect to see what we've spoke about before. What's been talked about is the Derek Chisora fight or Derek having another go. <laughs> In some ways, though, because we, we say a lot that, you know, sometimes in defeat, a fighter's stock can rise. And yeah. sometimes in victory, a fighter's stock can fall a little bit. Yeah. Did that do that to Joe Parker a little bit? It possibly did. Listen, if you look at, obviously, Derek's last fight, he gave Usyk a great fight. Mm. And then we're looking at that a weekend. It, it was disappointing. It was. It really was. So now it's sort of like, you know, does that fight have the same appeal? But being honest, they'll... I think that fight will happen and they'll put some kind of eliminator on it yeah. to then lead to a final eliminator, which I think will happen. And Derek Chisora always brings the action. It's, um, he's always ready. So, him and Parker, so it does make sense. Yeah, and, and again, that's that rung below the obvious Tyson course, Fury yeah. and Anthony Joshua. There. We're still up in the air that without fight one anyway, then, aren't we? Of course, that's it. We don't know when that's going to happen. Mm. So. If that doesn't, then it puts the winner of that in line, sort of there, yeah. thereabouts for either a final eliminator or one of those two. There was a, a card, obviously, on Friday night, and it, it wasn't the card that Frank Warren wanted initially. Yeah. Obviously, it was meant to be Carl Frampton, Jamal Herring. Yeah. That's been put back, as we know. But then, a fight we were talking about, I don't know whether we jinxed it or not, because yeah. you know, Anthony Kakachi, who's not had much luck at all in his pro career, yeah. The British champion was taking on Leon Woodstock and again, then a positive yeah, COVID test gets all off and Anthony, all that work that he'd put in. I mean, it's horrible, isn't it? But I feel massively It's, so, it's such a part of the game, but it's horrible. Him. You know, for, I'm, I'm for Woodstock as well. He tested positive. Hopefully he's good and he's recovering. Mm. But um, he's waited 15 months to be out there. He's finally getting his night. He's headlining after Carl's fight, being moved out to Dubai at the start of April. Yeah. So that was his big night, Anthony Kakachi and, and Leon Woodstock as well, you know, challenging for that British title. So it was just, it, it was, it was disappointing. And do you know what, fair play, the show, they still kept the show on. Mm. Um, they kept it, they showed it on television. And obviously on that, we've seen what got promoted to the um, a main event between yeah. Hamed and Kadim. It was, it was a great fight. Yeah. And then there's just an handful of fights on the undercard. Obviously a lot 
we'll be talking about Tommy Fury's fight <laughs> because of you know the big social media and, and everything, obviously because of the name. But it's um, I, this is sort of what I wanted to say was there was a lot of people sort of taking digs at the opponent. He fought Scott Williams from Manchester actually. Mm. You know, he's, a day, he's not he's not registered a win yet. But that Scott's job's out there to take prospects the distance, and and most of the time he does that. But I think because of the profile that Tommy has, mm. people was quick to jump and oh, he's fighting a guy who's never who's never uh, won. But if Tommy Fury was just a well, lad with the amount of fights he's had, who's had very limited amateur experience, it wouldn't even yeah. be talked about. But also, what I like to say is, you know, for the people who have digs and stuff like that, I might be wrong. I know nothing. However, I think the big re a big reason that fight, that show, sorry, stayed on and. So it got televised though, was because of Tommy Fury, because yeah. of the views he would get. Not the views that I think, <laughs> you know, his other brother in it, which someone stuck on him, social media over the weekend, but he still would have attracted a big yeah. audience. Since then, one of the Paul brothers, I think Sloan Paul, they've been oh, a bit dear. of back and forth. Um, he's got a bit WWE, and that we'll see. But listen, one positive about that, but let's not just remember, Tommy was a boxer before he went on. To Love Island, he's a boxer now, mm. so he's not someone who's just jumping on it. I think one of them Paul brothers could get you out of retirement, I think, if they keep going oh, where they're going. Wow, yeah, I'd, um, I think you might be right. There won't be mm. many you would, but I think they, one of them two would be. <laughs> it's now, it's crazy. And listen, I mean, we spoke about it, it's just sort of the disrespect that they bring. And I, I say it, it's so hard because when they fight, I think mm. we spoke about it, was it last week? Tiafimo Lopez. There's a great chance he might end up being on the undercard of one of them, which is mad, which is mm. mad. But that's sort of the world we're living in at the minute in the sport. Yeah, and as you say, fair play to Tommy Fury. He he, he did the business. John yeah, Fury in his did. corner as, as well. His and dad, Tommy's yeah. never lifted any, any no weights whatsoever. No, I mean, he's, what, some he's some physique, specimen, he? isn't he? he is. He's got the uh, he's got the Fury genetics, I think. Yeah, no, he is. He's in a great shape, like very body beautiful. Yeah, well, I say the Fury genetics. Like Tyson was never body beautiful, no. or even. Like Yui, but yeah, very body beautiful. And um, it was a good fight. And then obviously, we saw the huge ticket seller. I shouldn't say ticket seller, you know, the, the fighter, like a talented lad in um, Hina, yeah. fighting Ryan Oliver. We managed to have Ryan a few weight divisions out of his way, but he yeah. gave a great yeah. account of himself. I would have loved to have seen Nathan Hina's ring entrance yeah. with a crowd. Yeah. We've seen it once before, but mainly on social media. When the, when the crowd's about, that's one ring entrance. Yeah. I'd love to see live. Um, Sam Noakes. Great display mm. from him. Yeah. So listen, some lads got out there and they got um, some work that night in the, the current climate. That's only a positive thing. Well, that, that's the, that's the key point, isn't it? The, the lads get getting work. Of course it is. Of course yeah. it is. So that's that's the key point. And Ryan Oliver, who was the opponent, obviously for Heaney, as you say, he's jumped yes. up in weights. He's taken an opportunity, and in the left, in that the, the big left at the end of the seventh. I thought, yeah. hang on a minute, where's? It, it so might he, he had his success. So Ryan, it was, uh, yeah, Ryan's a talented lad. Yeah. Like I say, he's he's fighting a few weight. Division he yeah. gave a great account of himself yeah. and hopefully now he continues at the right weight division mm. and he only pushes on. And I, just a word as well, because the, the, the main event that shouldn't have been the main event, but was, yeah. but there was a, a great storyline with Kademi, who's come from Af Afghanistan. Yes. And again, there's an amazing story of how he ended yeah. in the UK. And so obviously the script was torn up a little bit with Ahmed. Yes. But that's yeah. the beauty of it, isn't yeah. it? You know, play, the, Ahmed you know took Kademi, his Kademi was a story going in yeah. there. It, but... Ahmed was like, well, no, it's my no. night too. And, yeah. and, and he, you know, it was and a good, one of the good great things solid about fight, wasn't it? Yeah, good, so, yeah very, very good yeah. fight. Very close on the cards, like you say. I thought Ahmed just done enough, yeah. and deserved winner. But it was a great fight, and since it's a fight that we won't mind seeing again. Yep. Yeah. Another fight then coming up that we do want to see because of the implications as well that will involve a Brit. Yeah. Clarissa Shields is in action, uh, and yeah. again, she's very much a force of women's boxing. Yes. This incredible talent and back-to-back -back gold medals of course as an amateur now doing everything right as a pro she's taking on marie eve de care who's canadian who's got the whole of canada behind her it's a pay-per-view yeah. event again you know women's boxing in the pandemic it's another another step forward you hope yeah. and clarissa a real talent isn't she unbelievable i um i don't know if i mentioned it on here before but i'll always remember 2012 before the olympics i was there and was watching the the u.s team spa uh, because they was using mm. the mere kind gym in bolton and I remember seeing this 17-year-old girl inspiring. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, wow. And I remember um, phoning my friends around saying, listen, there's a 17-year-old in the gym here. 
what odds is used to an Olympic gold? <laughs> um, and that's why I knew she'd only lost once to our own Savannah Marshall, mm. but looked unbelievable. And somewhat she's she very humbly um, puts at times. She's the greatest woman of all time. But listen, she's got a claim for that, two mm. Olympic gold medals. The fire weekend, I think she becomes the first, is it the in a four belt area. There's, yeah. there's a, there's a yes. mad fat it's like, four belt, uh, yeah. you know, two at two weights to be undisputed. Yeah. So, every credit, she's going pay-per-view. Well, the she's only woman, but you can't think of many men that have done it. You, no. The only person that comes to mind is Evander Holyfield, which yes. has cruiserweight and heavyweight, so which that's... is something that we're not going to see again. Yes. So, no, she is making the massive positive. strides. She's making Huge massive strides. strides. Like you said, she's heading her own pay-per-view. Mm. Hopefully that does well. So again, the women's sport's growing. Yeah. And um, I think more than anything from a selfish point of view, we just want it to build up so we get to see our own Savannah Marshall in with her. Well, we're going to hear from Savannah in a minute, but yeah. you just touched on something that's very interesting then, when you, you say about her making a joke about being humble because she yeah. likes to trash talk a bit. Yeah, yeah. And she's not shy in saying what she's worth. Yeah. And she's not shy Fair in giving play. it. Now, yeah. sometimes, obviously, there's a line, isn't there? And sometimes with the trash talking thing, I know it's not something you ever did, it wasn't yeah. your game, but sometimes, you know, I know fighters need to do that sometimes to get themselves revved up, Tony Bellew. Yeah. Uh, other times, people just maybe want that needle or yeah. that way inclined. She's she knows her worth and she's yeah. she's making a big noise. And she isn't humble. She thinks she's the yeah, best yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got in this sense. It's got to be a good thing for women's boxing, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And listen, if she if she does well with the pay per view numbers, uh, I'm sure Zavanna will say the same. It only makes that fight yeah. even bigger for her. So then, the big thing about women's pay compared to the men's. Joe, that's that's only going to rise. So she's doing no matter what. Like mm. like I said, Joe about being humble and stuff. But she's raising the profile of the women's sport very probably in a different way, but very mm. much like Katie Taylor. Do you know she's she's done amazing things to go to the profile as as now uh, like say Savannah world world champion. You see your Terry Happy and Natasha Jones. The sport's just growing mm. and growing. Um, the women's side of it, and listen, hopefully like her becoming a star. Yeah. These huge fights, I've said it, the fight between her and Savannah are possibly the biggest fight in women's boxing. Um, one of the biggest fights in women's boxing mm. history, I think. You, yeah. you talk about Leila Ali, Christy Martin, Christy Martin, but I think where the women's sport's at now, that's it. You just mentioned Katie Taylor there now. I've just got pictures of Katie coming in effing and blinding and trash talking everyone. <laughs> yeah. Just somehow that's Imagine. not that's not gonna happen, is it? But that's yeah. what makes it so important. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. But as you mentioned, Savannah, of course, Savannah is key to all of this. Clarissa is fighting Marie Eva de Court at the weekend. But we want to see a fight, Savannah Marshall. So a bit earlier, we myself and Aunt caught up with Savannah, see how she's getting on. Well, thanks for doing this, Savannah. It's uh, good to see you. And, and again, it's not too far for you and not too long for you to wait for when you're out again. I mean, how are you feeling? How is everything going with you? I mean, again, still strange times, but a bit of light at the end of the tunnel for everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Training's going well. I'm, I'm boxing on the 10th of April, so I'm about five and a half weeks out. I still haven't got confirmation on my opponent yet, which is a bit, um, a bit annoying, but... It is what it is. You've just got to, you know, keep your head on and train for every scenario, really. I was going to ask Savannah how is training going, but I'll probably find out a little bit more in a few hours' time <laughs> when I go up to the gym. Um, good. Do you feel in a great place? I said it to Peter last week. Do you feel since you become world champion, I, there's always a saying that once you become world champion, so many fighters improve 10, 20 percent with that. Do you feel sort of since the Anna Ranking fight, you become world champion? How do you do you feel like yourself? Do you feel there's improvement in your? I, I feel, to be honest, I just feel the same. Yeah. I just feel like I want more of it. God, yeah. You know, kind of like being a world champion. Everyone was saying, "Oh, just wait, you're a world champion. You'll feel different. Things will change." And really, nothing's changed. So yeah. I think I just want. It's like I'm still chasing for that. Something to change. No, of course, but I think at the same time, that's great that the hunger's still there. There's a lot of people there who think the end goal was always to become a world champion, I'm guessing, Savannah, but now yeah. it wants to be at different weights, unified, undisputed. It's, um, you're waiting on an opponent now. You're waiting on an opponent now. I'm sure we're going to get on to a minute. I'm sure so. You're always talking about this. Um, weekend, obviously, we've got Clarissa Shields on weekend. Will you be watching it? Um, 
I, I won't be watching it. I, I won't be watching it live, but uh, I'll be in bed, obviously. But I'll watch. I'll, I will watch it, and not just for the fight, but for the whole what she's doing for female boxing. It's it's the first pay per view women's yeah. super fight, isn't it? So, I, honestly, I hope she does well. I hope she does really well in it. It sells and people tune in. Um, because then it's, it's it's another massive step for female boxing. Yeah. Her, her opponent's also unbeaten though, isn't she, Savannah? You know, the Canadian Marie. Uh, I mean, and again, she comes with ambition. She's not got, obviously, the, the amazing pedigree of, mm-hmm. of Clarissa and yourself in terms of your own amateur pedigree. But, you know, she comes from a, a combat background and, and really fancies it. And again, she's got the whole of Canada watching. Yeah, I don't really know much about her. I just know she's a, she's a Southpaw, so... I know that in the past that's caused Clarissa problems when she's come up against South Falls before. So it'd be interesting to see. And like I said, I, I don't know much about um, Marie. Mm. And also Clarissa hasn't been in the ring for well over a year. So it'll be good, good, to, um, good to see what she brings. I'm excited. I'm excited for both of them. Savannah, I, I sort of I have this talk with Tash, and she'll say about how like when you first started off, there weren't really a kit for you during the early days with the GB squad and that. What do you think the way, obviously it's been for the better, but the way the women's game has changed now, obviously there's yourself, Tasha, Katie Taylor, your Clarissa Shields, but the amount of girls that are coming into boxing because of the likes of yourself, where where do you see the future of the women's sports going? It's it's going one way. It's crazy. I mean, when I first, Tasha was kind of, before me, I come along when all that hard work of not even having a kit and having to write letters to the ABA, trying to get them to send them to tournament. So I was quite lucky that I, I arrived just after all that struggle. But um, not your fault, your younger brother. <laughs> yeah, when I was kicking about, there wasn't a, I couldn't even there wasn't even a pro scene. Yeah, and it, it's due to the likes of Tash and Katie Taylor and Clarissa. Do you know all the, the the big surge after the twenty twelve um that really do you know it really popularised the sport for women, yeah. so it has come on leaps and bounds and especially during COVID I think because mm-hmm. of the likes of do you know I would say a female match isn't as expensive as a male's to put on, so women got a lot of limelight in COVID um obviously Tash Burton and Terry Harper. Uh, Katie was in there, uh, Shannon Courtney and Rachel Ball. So it, it is it is making massive strides. I'd I'd love to see it on par with the men's, but I don't think it'd happen in my my career time. Maybe you know, maybe the 20, 2024 cycle, the Olympic cycle. Maybe that's when it hopefully gets on par with the men. Just about a point on that, because I think you're right in that there's been a bit of momentum in the pandemic for, for women's boxing. But then we're talking about Clarissa this weekend, and Clarissa is going to dip her toe, or maybe more than that, with MMA. We know that she's going to run a boxing career and an MMA career now. She wants to do that as well. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, there's going to be more eyeballs on her, if you like, because she's going to be doing two sports. But for boxing, is Clarissa going into MMA a good thing? Um, I think, I think where MMA is and boxing is, I think the light years away from each other. I think, I, t- I talk about Eddie and what Eddie, what Eddie's doing now for women. Um, sorry, what's the main guy in MMA called? Oh, you know you're Dana White. Well, yeah, Dana yeah. UFC, but she's not going into UFC. I think she's going into yeah, yeah, yeah. the fighting league or the Peloton or the PFL. PFL, she's going yeah. into PFL. But Dana is the key man, yeah, in what he's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. But um, what what he was doing, he's been doing that, like popularising females in, in MMA, UFC, years before Eddie was. So I think that if you look at the, the MMA, UFC fighters, the social network, you know, their Instagram and the Twitters, they've got loads more followers, loads more publicity. And I do think that is down to how popular... MMA, females in MMA is. Uh, boxing's a bit behind, really. So I think that's probably the reason why she's doing it for the publicity. But fair play to her. If it, if it brings her them pay-per-view buys, I'm, I'm all for it. 
Would you ever, would you ever tempted, Svanna? Have you ever been tempted, approached through the MMA? Oh yeah, I have. Yes. Because because of because of you know the the publicity that that they get compared to the female fighters, the yeah. fight purses. It's it, yeah. there's a there's a big gap. April the tenth it is then, and and so it, it obviously won't be Clarissa, but we can't obviously not talk about you and Clarissa, but for obvious reasons because you're still that blot on her record, the only person to have ever beaten her, mm -hmm. amateur or pro. So it's going to happen. It, it's got to happen, hasn't it, eventually? And I'm sure you're fed up of, of, of even talking about this, but it's something to look forward to, isn't it, with you two and, and the way your careers are going? 100%, yeah. Um, th that fight will, I believe, 100% happen this year, towards the back end of the year, um, when she's done with messing about within the MMA and the octagon. But... Um, no, that, that fight will, will definitely happen. Like I said, I think more for her, more for her ego. You know, she wants to get that, that win back. And obviously, I want them belts. It's a very relaxed Savannah. It's great yes. seeing her there. And obviously, the Clarissa fight, as we yeah. understand. And, and it's great to hear her say by the end of the year. Brilliant thing yeah. to look forward to. But also her thoughts on MMA and... And Clarissa and all that kind of thing. You, you can see now where where some of the women are thinking that they've got they want to get paid. And if that's an avenue, right so. that Clarissa yeah. can do it. Of course, I'm rightly so. And listen, if Clarissa goes into MMA, she makes big noise there, yeah. and people are going to want to see the fight as well with the boxing. So it brings some of the MMA fans over there to over this side um, to watch more of the females compete. I think as well, fair play to Savannah, because obviously Clarissa has been pretty vocal. She said, I really hope it's a success for the pay-per-view. Yeah. And I don't, I honestly don't believe she's just saying it's because it makes our fight bigger. It might up the wages of our fight. I don't mm. believe that. I think she genuinely wants that just for the women's sport in general. But um, yeah, on that side of things, the, the female fighters in the MMA mm. business, the profile's through the roof. It has been for, I think, credit to you know mm. the promoters in that in that sport how they've got behind the female fighters and how they've made them stars is something that a lot of sports mm. could learn from you like a bit of the mma don't you i do like a little bit of mma yeah, yeah. i don't pretend i'm really knowledgeable but i'm a bit of a fan yeah yeah but i'm sure you you've said once that you you've kind of half had an eye on would you fancy a little yeah. go at that you know i don't think i would now i um i think it's when i was uh, when i was fit and that i thought <laughs> oh, i could learn how to, the ground game because it's very different like yeah. people think oh you know if you're landing those small gloves you would you would knock them over but landing that shot is very different to landing a punch in boxing when you know how low they can get where feet are involved yeah um uh, never say never never say never but um I just don't know if I'm, Never say don't never. Ever so we've got the exclusive. Enough. Anthony Crawler's coming back from <laughs> the MMA. I'm fishing there for an offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody that is very much involved in MMA and somebody that knows Savannah very well is Liverpool's Molly McCann. She's a very tough operator, isn't yes. she, Molly? But Started off in the sport of boxing. She did indeed. And uh, our producer, Josh, went to grab a word with Molly. You mentioned uh, Clarissa Shields a moment ago when talking about the women's boxing. And um, she's going to be stepping into MMA as well as um, carrying on her boxing career. Uh, what do you make of that from Clarissa? And she's obviously, uh, you're, you come from an amateur boxing background. Uh, yeah. How, how different is it to go from boxing and learn these different um, disciplines and stuff as well? So you've got the, the pure, the, is it called the purest? Mm. You have this mindset, right? And, and I think, Clarissa has this godlike mindset, which she's earned, so she can have that. Um, I'm not disputing that at all. And I had it just being, I mean, I didn't do anything boxing. I, I won an, a, an ABA title, do you know what I mean? But I never, I never even, I couldn't even lace hair boots up, do you know what I mean? That's the, the difference in the levels. But she will come into this thinking, uh, because only because I've done it from experience, it's like an arrogance and an ego with grappling. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll put me in four ounce gloves and watch what I can do, which is the truth. Like, she'll not, she's going to put people away. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot harder than what she's expected it to be. She's gone to the right place, so she's going to try and emulate Holly Home. You know, she's out in Albuquerque, she's out at uh, Jackson Winkle Gym. And she's working with John Jones. She's working with Holly Holm. 
um, Michelle Waters. And so she's round champions. She's round the right mindset group of people. And she's not the big fish anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, she's the little fish in the big ponds now. So hopefully that's a little bit humbling for her. And she gets to, she's going to clean up wherever she goes just because of what she's done in boxing. Do you know what I mean? And then, um, I think she'll sign a deal. I don't think she'll go to the UFC. I think she'll go there so she can always keep coming out if, you know, if the money's right for boxing. But um, this weekend, who is she fighting? What's her name? Marie Eve, is it? Yeah. And she's a, a lanky southpaw. And uh, there's just not many more people for here to fight in boxing. Do you know what I mean? Like, this fight, Marie is done an exceptional job and going 17 and now there's no finishes there so she's a technical fighter do you know what I mean she, she doesn't pack much punch and then you've got Clarissa and you're watching it emulate like uh, Alvarez and Anthony Joshua at the minute on her Instagrams and um, she's just she's she's like Mike Tyson she's a bad man <laughs> do you know what I mean so I think I think Clarissa does it uh, within eight Mm-hmm. And there's only one fight left for her in boxing, and that, that's against me mate Savannah, who's already put put a pa- pasting on her once before. I say pasting, not a pasting. She she's a technical boxer. She's got that lovely, lovely style, and um, style makes makes match good matches. Do you know what I mean? And I think she would frustrate Clarissa, and I think they'd both. Um, it would really go one way or the other with them too because of how invested they are. Like, it makes me laugh because people go, Savannah's rent free in Clarissa's, in Clarissa's head, do you know what I mean? Because Clarissa just gets trolled to death from the English fans. Um, but yeah, I think Clarissa will win this weekend, inevitably make her switch over and have a fight this year. I think she will be... Um, they build her up, which you don't really get that in MMA. You don't kind of get, you just get a fight and have the time to go, do you know what I mean? But I think she'll get a uh, drip fed people. Um, and then the Savannah fight might happen. Just got to see what Eddie Hayne can do with match room. When we talk about boxing, I think last year, Katie Taylor and Terry Harper, Tasha Jonas, Chantal Cameron, S- Savannah Marshall, and Clarissa Shields really, really put put female boxing on notice to the point where Eddie Haynes like, no, it's just boxing now. It's just boxing, do you know what I mean? So it's nice that everyone been knocking on the door for so long, do you know what I mean? And it's open when you go back to like Jane Couch back in the day, she like not happened for her when she won her real titles, do you know what I mean? But now pe- the women are able to make a living and a sustained, comfortable life. So there you are, Molly McCann with Thoughts on her mate Savannah, who gave her a pasting, she says. That's great stuff, that wasn't it? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Top work, well, top work. Molly made some great points there, and I think, like, not just because she's sort of agreed, it's, it's very different, you know, putting the four ounces on, those small gloves, oh, if she lands in them, of course, hmm. you know, it'd be, but it's much harder to land in that sport than it is in boxing. Well, you're going to have to think about that now, you've announced your comeback as yes. to combat sports, but MMA. I'm already having uh, doubts over it. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll hold that. But what, what, what second sport would you have done? Second sport would have done? Ah, good point. Do you know what? I think it probably would have been MMA. Would it? Probably would have been yeah. MMA. MMA, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't a good enough footballer. Done a terrible basketballer. I was a decent, you know what I was? I was a decent cross-country runner in school. Yeah. Might have done some kind of distance running, yeah. Distance running. Yeah, fair enough. And before, we were just talking about Tommy Fury, who, of course, is yeah. courting that celebrity world now. And, yeah. and again, you touched upon the, the Jake Pauls of this world and all that kind of yeah. that kind of stuff. Just thinking now, then, before we go, yeah. Crawler's reality show. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you, if, uh, you're not a YouTuber, but we're delving into that no. world a little bit now. Yeah. And you like your reality TV. I so, do, you know, for what, it. what would you go on now if, if given on? half a chance um, we're putting you out there now really yeah, you know, I want a like, commission for this if anything comes out to there, this yeah first the MMA thing and now this yeah. uh, I think my, my favourite me the, um, <laughs> the most enjoyable one I think is the, uh, the naked jungle, attraction isn't it? naked attraction yeah, the possibility yeah. um, got asked to go on it what was it I had to go on some, like first dates once but yeah. obviously wasn't well, allowed were you married so it was yeah. a bit tricky um, yeah. yeah I wouldn't have got away with that 
you know what? I think Strictly's brilliant, but I'm a terrible dancer, so right. that's a no-no. Normally, uh, sports people, and with obvious evidence, go for the jungle. Yeah, I think it's probably just a bit of mental toughness. Yeah. I think like that. I think, what's the other one? Big Brother, I think. Don't know, I've never seen that. The real me had come out, I won't be very well liked. Um, that's yeah. finished anyway, I think, isn't it? I think so. Right. Yeah. You have to stick to training fighters, aren't That's what it is, yeah. Which uh, I know you, you've got plenty on your plate. Any news from yeah. uh, your respective no, gyms? Just... Because obviously you've got your own in Limeside, the ABC, yes. where you train Rihanna and, and you train James and you work with Joe yeah. still, obviously, with all the fighters in Bolton. So just, what's going on? Everyone's just waiting. Um, we said last Callum Johnson's just waiting to get his date nailed down in the middle of April. As I keep saying for weeks, Tasha's very, very close for the announcement of her big fight. You're like Eddie and Fury yeah, and Joshua with this. I it's am, very I keep close. It it's up. very no, close. Really close. We're not, we're this actually quite, is getting right. closer though. Right. This actually is getting closer. And yeah, just my fact is we just we're just waiting. Um bit of light at the end of the tunnel now, some shows hopefully. Yeah. End of May or June. So yeah, we'll have some hopefully some news very soon. Great stuff. Enjoy the week and uh, Hold it. Everyone else, enjoy the week. Betfred, the place to be for all your betting options. And this, of course, is the Betfred Boxing Show.